Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. Things are looking pretty good overall at the zoo. I think there are a couple of issues that need fixing, but we'll get all that tackled in due time. I'm honestly, after last session and after seeing how the money and stuff has been fluctuating, I'm a little less concerned. And uh, we're gonna take some steps today to hopefully uh, solve that a bit more permanently. Uh, though we will be doing that later on in the session, I want to kick things off with a time lapse more or less right off the bat because I would like to try and complete the koala enclosure, a at least the um, at least the garden space of it. Uh, I might not be able to complete the little like, you know, restaurant area I wanted to build just at the entrance of it. Uh, but if I can complete the garden space then I would feel comfortable moving on, at least, you know, momentarily and focusing on something else in the next session. But uh, just to give you all some context as to what I'm talking about, let's make our way over there. And as I do, I just want to mention, folks, as always, if you've been enjoying the series, if you would like to see more Planet Zoo on the channel, don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Again, as always, I look at the number of likes and comments. But I also read through all the comments to uh, see what people are thinking, what y'all are feeling, what you want to see, how you want to see it, etc., etc. Uh, now, with that said, over here, actually, hold on, before I forget. <laughs> Wait, this one's the Thunderbox? Wait, are they, are they both called the Thunderbox? Because this one's the Thunderbox. They shouldn't both be called the Thunderbox. So that's weird that the name carried over. I've never seen that happen. But anyway, uh, this one is <laughs> supposed to be, or is going to now be, uh, the Koalu. There we go. I think I spelled that correctly. Koalu. It came in through the suggestions uh, in the comments. And um, was it Koalu or Koalalu? Now I can't. If I, I feel like Koalalu sounds too much like Kuala Lumpur. So uh, let's, go with, let's go with Koalu. Sounds like a mispronounced koala. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I hope y'all do too. Anyway, anyway. Um, what was I getting at? Right. Uh, so there's supposed to be a whole, you know, construct over here. Uh, there's supposed to be a whole uh, roof. The flooring is going to change. There's a lot that's going to happen over here. We're going to extend like a garden space over here as well. Um, calling it a garden is a little gratuitous maybe, but there will be some vegetation here as well. So that is, I'm considering that a separate entity from, you know, the, um, the, the central area of the actual enclosure, which I'm also considering separate from the outer ring outside the, ex uh, the enclosure. Um, which again, just as a reminder, I will be integrating into the conversation about, uh, uh, dingoes and cassowaries. And for those of you that were pointing out that it might be a good idea to have at least one, if not both of those animals, sort of in the middle between these two enclosures, that has absolutely been heard. Uh, and I do not disagree what I might look to do. And again, this is not concrete, but what I'm thinking right now is we might put the, uh, cassowary down over here in this kind of a spot so that way guests will you know come through they might do the cassowary loop around and then go up this way and over here somewhere we'll have the uh, the dingoes potentially it's not a again it's not concrete uh, we might have the dingoes somewhere over here so they're a bit closer you know en route from the kangaroos to the uh, koalas uh, you might go the 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 dingo route uh, come back down this way loop around this way maybe um, but the dingoes will then transition into the African wild dogs and then we'll, we'll, you know, build up from there is what I'm at present thinking. And, and that'll hopefully, uh, you know, stop the, uh, the issues and the concerns of guests having to travel too much. Uh, the other thing to mention as well, really quickly before we dive into this time-lapse is, uh, with regards to our monorails, I might take a look at doing some improvements to them. Um, right now we have just, you know, they're all going in one direction. So if anybody comes in at the entrance and wants to go to Australia first, you know, they're kind of out of luck. Um, so I might actually build a second station over here. I don't know how we'd be able to, I don't know what would work best. Like I might have to add a second level or I might put the entrance to that elsewhere. Again, this is, this is, this is nowhere near concrete. This, this might as well just be like vapor as far as an idea is concerned, but it wouldn't be bad to have a set of uh, monorails uh, going the other way as well so that we're able to you know have a sort of this two-way conversation rather than coming over here wanting to go to australia and then having to either walk this massive distance or having to take this monorail all the way around right so uh we'll see about that and then also i will want to introduce another uh transit mechanism as an outer ring movement so that if you end up at the you know let's say aldabra tortoises and you want to check out australia then you're not uh you know, doing this 
like month long trek you can take a train ride or a boat ride or something take a safari whatever it might be uh, but find an easier way to come from one end of the zoo to the other lots of stuff to manage and think about over there um, but i just wanted to point out that that stuff is on sort of like top of mind for me i saw a few of you mention uh or, or bring these things up in the comments and i of course i greatly appreciate that so i just want to make sure uh y'all know that i've seen your comments and uh, that i have them you know, in mind, and I have had them in mind, uh, because there are, of course, you know, serious concerns that we'll have to uh, tackle as time goes on. With that said, I think that's all I have to uh, talk about with regards to, you know, the near future plans. Again, we have some management stuff we'll be doing, which I think will finally uh, solve the, I don't want to call it a problem, but the concerns about our financial situation. Uh, but before we get into that, I do think I want to get the time lapse in first. Not too worried about spending too much money over here. I mean, yes, it will be expensive, I mean, but uh, I'm not too worried about our recovery. And in fact, spending all that money up front before solving our problem might make me be a bit more serious about solving this financial situation. And I might actually start calling it a problem at that point. Um, but folks, that's that. I think uh, we are good to kick off the time lapse. Hopefully we'll see this area completed. But if I keep rambling, we won't. So with that said... Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, I can happily say that today's time lapse has us actually accomplishing everything we set out to accomplish for uh, the first time in maybe forever. It feels so strange being able to say that. I, I part of me doesn't even believe the words coming out of my mouth. But uh, exciting times as we you know wrap something up and uh, open ourselves up to various options for the uh, next steps, if you will. So. Uh, super excited for uh, you know whatever comes next but also super excited to share what we have accomplished today um first things first i actually cap off a little bit of what was left over from the previous session i think i mentioned that i was going to add some steps to this area over here just to make sure that our keepers would be able to uh, climb up and, and clean this space if necessary and apart from that as well you will see me experiment a little bit more with the uh, the entrance area uh, with regards to uh, adding a bit more adding a few more decorative elements uh up in that up in that area uh you'll also see well right now i'm just kind of looking around and getting an idea of uh sight lines and, and where people are likely to go and, and and look from uh in the hopes of being correct but you know we'll deal with that when the time comes and over here again you can see me kind of experimenting with with some things that i decide not to keep because they just become overbearing and repetitive and other things that i decide to keep i actually wasn't thinking or planning on doing this at all um, but as I kind of came back into the space and was looking around, I realized that, you know, what it, it really needs something up front over here. Uh, we had to uh, get rid of the original plan because it was climbable and that allowed the koalas to escape, which is obviously not acceptable. So instead, I needed something else to make the entrance a bit more interesting. And I wanted to get some more vegetation up front over here as well. Make it really feel like you're entering, again, like an intimate, comfortable, uh, I can't call it a private space, but something a bit... Um, uh, in enclosed, I guess, uh, separated maybe from the uh, the rest of the zoo. So adding a bit more vegetation over here, adding some more trees and things like that, I feel like helps uh, emphasize that separation from the rest of the zoo. So you know, putting down some mulch, putting down these uh, plants and stuff as well. And, and another thing to consider as well: koalas are one of the few animals that really don't care about how much vegetation you put down, and it is a good idea in my humble opinion to take advantage of that when that opportunity presents itself uh because again it happens rarely more often than not animals hate it when you add too much vegetation and sometimes quote unquote too much vegetation is actually not all that much at all so you end up with some barren spaces unless you ended up making a small enclosure in the first place a anyway i don't want to talk about that too much point being i have an opportunity here to do a lot of vegetation work uh, so I'm glad, once again, that the koalas have been kept separate from the kangaroos. I'm glad that they have their walk-in enclosure. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to take advantage of the things that make them unique. Uh, now, with that said, I believe that is all the work done wrapping up the remnants of last session's work. Now we move on to some of the other ideas. Uh, I'd mentioned, I thought I'd mentioned wanting to do a uh, kind of hanging garden type space. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Uh, but either way, I saw some of y'all mention it in the comments as well as like it'd be a good thing to uh, try and do. Totally agree. It was part of the plan. Uh, so I'm glad to see that, you know, in the comments, I suppose. So just building a little lattice structure over here. I end up using a few different uh, pieces, a few different types of wood. I also end up adding some rope in the middle as well. Because even though you're not going to be able to see it super clearly, 
Um, when you do catch a glimpse of some of these pieces through all the vegetation, I feel like it brings it to life. It makes it feel a bit more uh, real, a bit more, it like legitimizes the end product, I suppose. Because uh, now it feels like, yeah, these, these things are actually resting on something. These things are actually, you know, they're actually hanging off of something rather than just uh, filling an empty hole in the sky. Uh, and then you can't see it as well right now, but after I adjust the placement of some of these items, you are more easily able to see the, uh, again, the wood and the rope that lies underneath. And to me, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, so I'm actually going to build a bit of a section over here where you can stay underneath the uh, covered uh, you know, canopy, if you will. Uh, the idea being, if it starts to rain, you want to seek shelter, you can, and you don't have to leave the enclosure for it. If you have an umbrella or don't, you know, either way. Um, apart from that as well, if you just want to get away from the, uh, the sun and that's actually a big part of, uh, of my approach with what you're going to see today is I try to, basically I try to build two separate approaches to the enclosure further down. It, it kind of splits up into quarters almost, uh, the top half, the entrance half of the enclosure, it has this concrete rather plaster aesthetic, a bit more, you know, quote unquote artificial, if you will. Whereas the um, the other half, the 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 non entrance half, uh, is a bit more like wooden wood tones, more you know browns and earthy tones and 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 things like that. Um, and then between the two, you know, I guess lateral halves, left and right, uh, one side, the one that we're working on right now, is going to have cover. It's going to act as a shade. All the seating is being set up to you know so you can sit in the shade and, and chill over here. Uh, we have these hanging gardens and things like that. It feels a lot more like an enclosed space, a bit more like a, uh, I don't want to call it a tunnel, uh, but it is more, it is more covered. It is more um, dense, I guess, if you will, uh, maybe even a bit more intimate. Uh, whereas on the uh, flip side, on the other side, what we're going to do is we're going to still have, you know, coverage, but it's going to be a bit more open. It's going to be a bit more airy. There's going to be some more room. Uh, it's going to feel like rather there's some more room because it's not going to use, you know, structures to uh, enclose the space. Personally, I like that asymmetry. I like that kind of variety in uh, in the path and the variety of experiences that one, you know, small quote unquote enclosure can uh, can can give you. Uh, I hope you all agree. I hope you all like it as well. But again, to me, it just it allows me to try some different things uh, in, in the space as well. And, and I think it comes together quite nicely. Now you can see over here. In this middle section, just putting down some rocks, putting down some, you know, bracken, putting down a variety of, of vegetation that I think can live on ground level without needing a planter or anything like that. Uh, I didn't want to just build planters everywhere. I, I, we we could have. We absolutely could have. Um, and, it, you know, it might have, it, rather, it would have worked, uh, but that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to just do like, okay, I found something that works, and now let's just do it a hundred times and, uh, you know, call it a day. That's... uh how I roll, I suppose. Uh, back up over here a little bit because I felt like this area was a little too barren, a little too empty, needed something. Uh, so again, using the plaster on this side because again, this is the entrance side of things. So going for that, uh, th this is where like the blend happens, I suppose, because we've got the plaster uh, on the uh, the ground for the planter, and then we've got the uh, wood in the center for the you know climbing pieces. Uh, so it's sort of where the the mix is happening, and then the uh, forgot to mention earlier, but the uh, sponsor boards themselves are also kind of a blend between what's happening on either half. We've got the uh, marble bases, and then the, I, I think they're metal sculptures, but they have those earthy tones. They look very, you know, natural, so to speak. Uh, so they're like the perfect blend between the uh, the two halves I was talking about previously. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, building another little planter over here out of the plaster pieces just felt necessary. This area felt a little empty, a little barren, a little sad even, I would say. And if we keep the planters, um, you know, herbs, if you will, low enough, then the uh, the koalas are able to climb in and they're not going to, you know, lose the, the space of, for activities. Um, so that, you know, works out just fine in my opinion. And uh, it also, again, spruces the space up a bit more. Uh, so yeah, just, you know, minor adjustments. It's a trying to hit that balance between symmetry and asymmetry because the path is obviously not perfect over here with a weird kind of strange curve we've got going. Um, but yeah, just again, putting down some more vegetation, quite a bit of that going on around this uh, enclosure because again, take advantage of those unique opportunities, right? And again, adding some more layers as well. It just makes it feel just that much more real. And you can see now, here's my <laughs> moment of regret. I started to feel like this space was a little too... Uh, 
claustrophobic, maybe. Uh, a little too tightly packed. And not just that, but this is sort of like the darkest wood we have in this entire area. And uh, you can see the wood in the center is a bit lighter. It feels a bit airier, even. Uh, so I decided to uh, to change the color of the wood on these pieces. And as you can see, I'm going to struggle for a little bit with deselecting elements. I, I learned the trick as I go through this time lapse. The trick is to make an extremely small selection box to deselect. Um, but yeah, it's a yeah yeah it's a yeah bit of a struggle at first. Nonetheless, that is my one major kind of regret setback during this time lapse, having to go back and and recolor all of these pieces of wood uh, but i'm glad i did because as you can see even well that was very quick but after the time lapse you'll get a better look at it it, it feels so much um it, it feels more refreshing it feels a bit more open it feels a bit more welcoming and it matches the space a bit better as well i would say so um again after the time lapse you'll you'll get a, a quick look at uh, how that all has come together i definitely prefer it now adding some more tamarind trees over here i'm a real big fan of the color they have. Uh, the the color also matches our uh, you know circular, our concentric circles and whatnot. Uh, all, all the geometric shapes we have in the entrance, the the little circles that light up. So I want to get some more uh, tamarind trees in there, and you'll see me add some more to this open space as well. Um, as I kind of do a quick kind of look around and try to figure out, am I done? I'm not done. I need to add something. I just don't know what. Added another uh, uh, again, getting that the coverage in here adding some color in here as well, and making this coverage a bit more open. Again, it's it, from up on high, the canopy looks like it covers everything. And so, you know, you do have shade, what, you know, depending on where the sun is. Uh, but if you were actually standing in the enclosure and looking around, you would be looking out into the open. Again, it doesn't feel as enclosed. Um, now, granted, our, uh, our canopies on the other side, you can also look out. It's not like there are walls blocking your view, but it's uh, because of the ceiling that's so low, it feels a bit more enclosed. Uh, now it's time to put the name in. Now I've had this name selected for a while. I got an excellent suggestion basically right off the bat. So thank you very much for that. There were quite a few really good suggestions, uh, but this one hit a couple of notes and I, I couldn't deny it as an option. Uh, we are going with the name Koala. I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. I've always been nervous about how to say this word, but uh, Koala Canberra. Canberra? 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 I don't know. Koala Canberra is how I'm going to go for now. Feel free to correct me. Uh, Canberra is supposedly, we don't know for sure, but it's supposedly derived from the uh, Ngunnawal word. Ngunnawal are a people of southern New South Wales in Australia. Uh, it is derived from their word Canberra with a K and uh, less R's and an M instead of an N. Uh, and that means... Um, meeting place. Apparently it's a disputed origin, but uh, it's an interesting suggestion that came through, so thank you very much for that. But with that name in place, folks, that is all for the time lapse. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of Koala Canberra? Question mark? Alright, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and I mean, I, are we provisionally calling this space done? I think so. I'm pretty pleased with uh, how it's all come together and as always, and I'm sure I mentioned this during the time lapse as well, I would love to hear what y'all think about the various new elements we've added to this space today, including of course uh, well, not just the name itself, but the uh, the construct of the name. I'm very curious to see how this actually looks and lights up at night. Um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be an interesting part of the experience again as we build this space out in the near future as well. We will be integrating this entrance and I'm hoping to use that as a lighting element. So even though right now it might seem, actually I need to make a little bit of adjustment. All right, all right, there we go. Uh, even though right now it might seem you know, a little bit plain, I mean we've got this little cheeky little thing going on over here, but uh, I think once the area around it's been fully built up and once it's lit up at night, it'll really shine. I was going to say pun unintended, but let's be honest here. Uh, but anyway, uh, apart from that, I really quite like how, well, there, there's a couple things I like, and actually, this time of day ended up being perfect for building this, uh, because of just how, like, if we go out over here, uh, you can see just how intense the sun feels, and just how hot, and like, <laughs> I don't know, like, sweaty you feel just standing here and looking out this way, right, like, beautiful you know i think it's rather nice to look at but you can you can feel the heat i can at least maybe it's partly because it's so hot in 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 toronto right now or at least in this room um but anyway it, it all worked out great because what it's allowed me to do is build um 
the the uh, the <laughs> climate into the experience, if you will. So you come in and look how like shaded it looks and feels. Like right now, these guys are all you know melting over here, as you can see. Hopefully, the shade. The tremendous amount of shade will help keep this space nice and cool. We might even add a cooler or a mister, like we've been doing, right? And then we've got, um, well, we've got a, a split, basically. If you go this way, we've got this, like, canopied area where we have the, uh, you know, um, overhead garden, if you will, like hanging gardens, if you will. Uh, you saw me kind of change these colors and stuff around to match the overall Australia aesthetic as far as these pieces are concerned. I feel like this works a lot nicer. Initially, I used the dark wood, but the lighter wood, I think, breathes some more life into it as well, makes it feel a bit airier uh, rather than, uh, you know, claustrophobic, I guess. And we've got these little, like, seating areas over here if you want to sit and chill and look at the animals or, you know, take a look at the sponsor boards and things like that. Um, so I really like this experience over here, like, coming in from... Uh, you know, coming in from the open, uh, if it starts to rain or something, you, know, you can run down over here, put your umbrellas away if you have them and just chill, uh, relax, watch the animals, sit down. I am tempted to actually put up a couple of vending machines in the area as well. Um, because I feel like, you know, this far away from there, if you, if you weren't thirsty there and then you've started walking down and then you start feeling thirsty, uh, maybe like water or something. I feel like I wouldn't want to do milkshakes or slushies or anything like that, but water, you know, in the middle of a, of a space like this works. Uh, so we might do that. I'll see how guests are feeling. Uh, but apart from that, you know, you end up over here where things are a little bit more open so that folks on the other side can see as well. Um, so here we, it's, it's open. We've got this beautiful like shadow being cast by the, uh, by the trees and stuff like that. Uh, but if we go back to the entrance, you know, that, that, was, that was direction number one. Direction number two is, uh, is you turn around this way. You go this way, we've got, it's a bit more open over here. So if you'd rather stand in the sun, you know, you can, it's, it's a lot more open. Uh, you can sit down over here as well. We've got a couple of seating spots, uh, you know, right off the bat. You can continue on and now over here, there's still cover, uh, but it's not as dense. So it, it, it's a bit, you know, warmer, if you will. It feels a lot more spacious as well. And uh, like, like it feels a lot more airy as well, but you still have a bit of cover, you know, from rain and stuff, though. I mean, it's trees, so, you know, you will get you will get wet. Um, so, you know, slightly different approaches on, on either side. I didn't want it to be too symmetrical and too, you know, uh, construct feeling we have. I mean, even with the uh, uh, with the planters and stuff we built, we, 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 we maintained a sense of asymmetry. So overall, I am quite pleased uh, with how this has all come together. Uh, there's obviously a lot of visual effects work and stuff to do on the outer ring, but like I've said previously many times, that is uh, a task for later, as is this restaurant area. Uh, for today, we are done with the time lapse. I'm quite pleased with the end result, and again, I hope you all are as well, but it's time for us to hit play and uh, see if we can't, once and for all, solve this situation that we're in. That was actually a pretty expensive build. Uh, I mean, I'm not entirely surprised, but Anyway, um, let's go ahead and unpause. Hopefully guests will love that space a lot more and as a result of that, be more willing to spend money. Actually, and let me check one thing. I mean, it's, it's probably too far away to have an impact on, yeah, these guys. Though I could put down some, I could like drop a tree or something down, you know, over here just temporarily just to help the space out a little bit uh, and, and maybe make a little bit more money off of these, uh, these vendors. Because again, when guests like the, uh, the decorative elements around a vendor, they are more likely to spend money. And we desperately need them to do that right now because, um, yeah, not going to belabor that point. <laughs> Mainly to make us all feel better. Let's go ahead and unpause, though, for now. I can't wait to doll all this stuff up as well. I don't know if we'll do that next session. I'm, I'll be completely honest. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to chase after next session. I'd love to hear what y'all would like to see. Do we do a new animal or do we uh, cap this area off even further or do we work on Darwin's Den? I'm a little, uh, I'm a little open right now to a variety of suggestions. I'm thinking... Actually, you know what? I don't know what I'm thinking. Let's go ahead and hit play. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much uh, very open-minded right now. So, you know, if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Again, as always, uh, just because I'm asking for suggestions doesn't mean I will end up picking one. I might come up with a different idea between now and then. But I would like to uh, obviously hear what people are interested in seeing and uh, work around that, as I always try to do. Or not around that, sorry, but with that. I feel like work around that is also the right way to say it. But I feel like work around and work with, they, they kind of mean different things, you know? Um, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead and let's see. What was I what was I going to do here? I was going to call the keeper. Um, but yeah, let me know, and then we'll we'll figure out what we uh, do next, and and not just you know it won't just determine what happens next session, but the next handful of sessions. Now, 
you may have noticed that some of our lionesses over here are actually uh, impregnable, <laughs> is I guess one way to put it. Uh, which is sad to see Malkia, it would be sad to see Malkia and Jumoke go, but we are trying to be more responsible, we're trying to be uh, more careful with regards to, oh, look at those ear wiggles, uh, with regards to our finances and stuff, so it would be wise to send Malkia over to the, um, tra well actually we can rehome her. I feel a lot better rehoming an animal because I feel like, okay, they're being taken care of, we're not just like trading them somewhere where they won't be taken care of or you know, sending them off to, uh, The wild. Let's let's just say that. Uh, let's go ahead and rehome Malkia. Oh, it really hurts to do, but we have to do it. It's a little bit of an expense, uh, but the thing is that by rehoming Malkia and then Jumoke as well, if I could find you. Uh, oh, off you go, buddy. Yeah, they're such glorious animals. Uh, Jumoke, where are you? Over. And a second. There you are. Trying to run away from my click. I think not. They're such high quality. Now, here's the thing, and this was brought up in the comments a couple episodes as well. Uh, a couple episodes ago, sorry. Um, the longer an animal stays in the zoo and stuff, the higher its star rating is able to get. So we are missing out on the high star ratings of some of these animals that have stayed with us for a long time. Uh, that might affect donations a little bit, but, but by rehoming some of these animals or otherwise removing them from the zoo, uh, we should be reducing the costs of feeding them. And lions, as we've learned and seen multiple times now, are extremely expensive to feed. If I recall correctly, it costs about 30k. Just about 30k every year to feed. And you can see right now, uh, I, I think new food was just put down and our money dropped significantly. In like one fell swoop, it just dropped. Like a boulder. Oh my god. And now it's on the way back up again. So yes, let's let's continue doing this. Um, basically, the suggestion was, and I and I, I do agree with it as much as it hurts to do. Uh, the suggestion was to uh, maybe remove some of the lower quality females um, from the enclosure. Let's take a look at our animals. That way, there'll be we will need less food, and by needing less food, we will you know save a little bit of money here and there. So over to are lions here I, and i really hope i'm not um too late on this you know i I need, to, I need to make sure like i'm picky but not too picky uh so aboyami or rather abayomi sorry is the dad i should mark that down um is pregnant about to have some babies good stuff good genetics yep i say about to but still some time to go um are young oh, let's go by maturity over here flip it around all right cool Mina, what are your genes like? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, Subira, what are your genes like? Pretty good, but immunity is low, so you know what? Might be one to trade out. We can also, you know, get her off of contraceptives. L let's see if there are if there's worse. Namono. And these guys are all pretty magnificent. Uh Adesina right now is maybe one of the lowest in terms of stats. And Fama Falami as well. Alright, so Falami is a definite uh, trade center situation. Uh, let's go ahead and send you to the Trade Center. Of course, this window closes. And the filter gets removed as well. Definitely some improvements that could be made there. Uh, uh, Edesina. Let's see. Let's see now. Hmm. Hmm. Again, not the best. Not as good as, you know, for example, Namono. So fine. Adesina. It's still fantastic genetics, right? Like, these are still really good genes. Uh, but let's go ahead and send it to the Trade Center as well. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. I mean, this is, uh, this is actually pretty rough. Uh, let's, be, let's be real. Sub 100k after such a long time, that's kind of a little, little concerning. A little concerning. Lots of babies in here now. Abayomi, or Abayomi, sorry. And Mono, I think we need to get rid of you as well. A low immunity, right? Over the trade center with you. Eventually, when we stabilize a bit, we will um, take a look at getting them back out so that, again, it's a busy enclosure. I would like the enclosure to be super busy at all times. I would make it very happy, but we have to be reasonable right now. Um, pun intended. Um, the, uh, the, 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 
the, there's no point having a bunch of animals if you uh, can't feed them and you go bankrupt. Why has Hunter been in a box for too long? Unbox all animals. Hopefully they're okay to move around over here. Uh, habitat. Reversible area. It looks like we're still good. Looks like we're still good. Still got all the climbing and everything. Enrichment's kind of low because of food enrichment. Well, we can go ahead and add another one of these then. I, I, like, I like these. This, this is a very fun toy. The, um, the feeding tree. One over here, I think, maybe. Reason for guests to maybe come around this way. Okay, money's looking like it's on its way up. What I could do, people have always been saying what a great deal the ride is. It always empties out at the beginning of a new session, doesn't it? I feel like, I feel like that's a thing. I feel like that's a thing. Main circuit is really good value. Yeah, the, the people have always been saying that. So maybe it's time for us to, well, let's do a couple things. First of all, uh, because it's making me nervous, exhibit trading. Do we have a bunch in the storage? Yes, we do. A lot of these gold rankers will bring us some good money. I could save them uh, to retain high quality animals for, well, you know, we could do that for some of them. Uh, like Buana and Inten will keep. And then Tyson. No, you know what? Swindle. <laughs> the name always uh, brings a smile to my face. Uh, Louis, you no, know, Yautel, and yourself. Everybody else, let's go ahead and quick trade. 95k a little bit better a little bit better uh but yes okay so the main circuit right now potential yearly profit last year's profit we're, we're operating at a loss over here which is uh obviously a problem so let's go ahead and sorry go ahead and fix that uh entrance take a price let's go with 10 i feel like it's worth way more than 10 but we, we have to hit that balance between um between uh oh did it automatically change everyone oh no you know what it was entrance i made cheap right yeah we have to hit that balance between uh price per head and how many people are actually coming in uh now there was also a suggestion of putting more education boards in the area over here in the entrance so the guests have their education you know improved right as they come through which is something we're already doing with these guys down here uh, we could always add more. I think I'll call it a day here. Time has just flown by. You're super happy. Well, that's good to see. Overall, guests are not, though. And that's, that's the big part of our financial situation. It's just guest happiness is the biggest um, struggling, like, struggle point, I guess. I feel like it's largely because of walking distances. And I don't think uh, benches will do anything about that. The view was okay. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, as I, the thing is, like, I do things, oh, one of us was pickpocketed somewhere. Well, that's not good. I do things often that, um, you know, don't work with the game systems. Like, I would not, like, if you're going to sit down over here when a koala is over here and then complain about the view, it's like, well, I can't, you know, what, am I not supposed to put a bench down over here? No, I guess I just make a small square of an enclosure and then no one can ever complain about views. It's, it's catch-22, right? Like, guests will be happy with the view, but I, at least, won't be happy with the end product of the enclosure, uh, nor would I find it a particularly interesting enclosure. Another big problem is that we have... Ooh, excellent. Koala research is done. We can go ahead and double up on that just to get the advanced research going. Uh, but another issue I have is that I've got so many people hired, uh, so staffing might be a bit of a problem in terms of... Uh, you know, we're paying a lot of people who are not necessarily working um, all the time super hard or anything. A lot, a lot of low workload over here, for example. A lot of low workload over here. Let's go ahead and spread the love. You go ahead and work in South America instead. I mean, well, over here, we've got some high workload going on. Low workload, Africa West. Yeah, I didn't think I'd need two people. Let's go ahead and switch you to South Africa. Right? And then what I could also do is I could stop these staff rooms from doing these PR courses. Um, let me quickly take a look at one of them. And see a yeah, hundred per year <laughs> these are not these are not very expensive these are not very expensive and i think the uh earnings that come back from them are higher than the cost of implementing them because again the, the pr courses um make vendors better at making guests happy so chances are we're better off spending that money here all right what's your problem you look pretty happy to me 
my time was okay, okay. Well, nothing, nothing upsetting happened. I spent too much time walking. Ease. Didn't realize people complained this much. Elitsu North, they didn't. But again, Elitsu North were playing on uh, normal difficulty. I wonder if uh, that's one of the unmentioned issues. Okay, fair enough. If that's the case. That's the case. I'm trying to figure out how I can build a shuttle or something to, uh, to go from here out to here or something like that. Difficult. We're pretty densely packed right now is the thing. Pretty densely packed. And again, I don't think that complaint is about wanting a bench. Because we've got benches across the board. I mean, maybe we're just too crowded, and so the benches aren't being used. And I could try to put down some more benches here. Well, that kid's happy. Are you? Yeah, that kid's happy. Good. Good. That's nice to see, at least. Copy down over here. Copy you guys over. Go. If that you know helps at all, you know one one bench will make a difference. I actually wanted to check something else first. I wanted to check also uh, all the way over here temperature. That should be pretty good. I could look at adjusting temperatures as well. I mean heat is a killer. You can see we've got some pretty warm spots still. Can cool you down. That'll help a lot. These areas should be all right. Oh look at all. Oh no, that's heat. That's heat. I guess these guys are burning up, eh? Really? That hot? Fair enough. If that's the case. Cooler down here. Put a cooler down here. And let's go ahead and put another cooler down here. That's got to help. Yeah, I guess a lot of these guys were just burning up. No, not zero degrees. I think 20 is a reasonable amount you down 20 please pull you down to 20 as well cool very cool you guys are all colder up over there now we're good down over here i mean maybe this will make a world of difference because again heat heat is um you know a bit of a killer <laughs> so why is it now warmer in the shade how does that make sense or is it just the shadow? No, shadows don't show in this mode. That's weird. Have to have more offspring. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Ooh, nighttime. All right, let's go check. I like that. I do like that. Wonder how it looks when it's even darker. Let's check the space out in the night. Still a couple of darkish spots over here that we might want to fix up. Um, what are we looking for? We're looking for light. We're looking for, I know exactly which light piece I'd like. This one. Not up like that, though. Down here. I like that. I always like how this light looks. It's like not overbearing or anything. Down a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. I might need to do a, a lighting pass properly. Because uh, as you can see, this will take time to do. This won't be a quick lighting pass. So we'll save that for later. I'm just going to put these two down and then save the rest for later. Definitely like this look. You can see it does like light the space up and everything. See where you're going. Pitch black everywhere. And this area is of course lit up by uh, by these giant lights over here. I, I like the subtlety of the lighting in uh, in this area quite a bit. Now this is a little too subtle, <laughs> by which I mean it's black, like pitch black. You know, like bar barely see. Uh, so we'll definitely want to adjust that as well. Get get a couple of those over. Get a couple of these over. But no, okay. We'll, we'll do the lighting in a, in a lighting pass. I, if I get focused down on that right now, we'll uh, we'll never we'll never do anything else. Uh, it takes a fair bit of time to to do lighting properly, and the sun's about to come up anyway. All right, guest happiness. 
what I want to do right now is I want to figure out what most people are complaining about. Wish it could have stayed longer. Okay. Wish it could have stayed longer. All right. Multiple animals have low welfare. That's you guys. Go ahead and take a look at all of you. But Thara gets to stay and Otama gets to stay. Let's keep Ratu as well. And Dumadi over here. The reason why I'm doing that is because I feel as though, yeah, they are they are gold ranked themselves as well. And Batara and Um Otama are about to pass away. Ooh, Ratu is not gold rank. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, exhibit trading. Look at our storage here. A lock, sure. And you in here. That ought to that ought to do the trick. All right, cool. All right, why else, why did you just become unhappy? I just wish. Okay, spent too much time walking. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's gonna be the common problem. Too much time walking. What about over here? Let's see, you guys. Too much time walking. Yep. Struggle to satisfy my thirst. Okay, too much time walking. My belongings are safe. You should never have to think about that. Too much time walking. Yeah. Any guess that wants to go too far away? Too much time walking. All right, all right. This was not such a significant problem. Now, the question is, do these guests... I'm, I'm guessing that these guests are pushing for refunds. Take a look at our finances right now. Been a pretty consistent thing. Now, even just removing refunds, though, um, won't solve our problem entirely. What about um, animal food? Jeez, negative 41k. Which of these animals are the most expensive? I mean, the llamas might be pretty pricey as well because there's so many of them. Maybe even the, uh, the tortoises. Uh, finances. No, nope. <laughs> these guys only cost me 2,000 a year. Fair enough. Up over here, do we have a better flow? Yeah, we do. Now that we moved one of the ATMs out, it looks like we have a slightly better flow. Because uh, another thing that was pointed out was that guests who are... You know what, let's put a donation bin down over here. Guests who are uh, stuck over here in this congested area are not able to move around and see other things and donate, which is absolutely accurate. That's definitely taking away from our uh, financial successes. I can't put one down over here, obviously, right? Ramps. Don't like... Um, like Donation bins and stuff can't be put down on ramps. Yeah, guests are super excited to see the animals over here still. Fair enough. Um, but I want to see how much they cost to feed. Not too much. I mean, these guys won't be that expensive at all. Yeah, not very pricey at all. What about over here? What about over here? Looking at about 2,000. All right. How about these lovely jaguars? Um, where are we? About 3,000. Not not that bad, not that bad. Yeah, it's re it really is just the lines, isn't it? <laughs> I don't I like we don't even need to go around doing this. It is just the lines. Oh, these guys are like two hundred and forty bucks. There's so many of them. What about over here? Yeah, like two hundred something bucks. Maybe we should get rid of some more lines. Not a long term solution. It's a short term solution. But as we add more animals, high appeal animals, we'll have uh, uh you know we'll have better um better balance in terms of making money. Uh, Subira, perhaps we send you to the uh, trade center. You're getting pretty old. Who else do we have over here? Where are we? Where's the door? There you are. Who else do we have over here? Amina and Subira are both old. Hungry. Well, let's get you fed. Hopefully food's coming through soon, and that's going to drop our uh, our finance again. Oh, hey, guests are happy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so... Okay, what do we what did we change? What do we change? Uh, we put down some coolers. It's possible that all the guests who were previously unhappy are now gone. Because that's the other thing, right? Like guest unhappiness uh, lasts for a while, right? Until those unhappy guests go. And uh, and was that the tipping point? I don't know. We'll we'll find out. Heat is a big problem. I I don't see it mentioned that often by guests, but they are. Like, to me, it's one of those things that seems to cause problems. Heat and, uh, and cold. Like, extreme temperatures, I should just say. 
Ah, now the reason I don't want to get rid of Amina or Subira is because they are very high quality genes. They're they're on their way out, but they're very high quality genes. Um, our babies over here, Rukia. Take a look at their genetics real quick. Very solid over here. What about Salma? Nice, nice, very nice. Uh, who else? Oh, up over here. Taking a nap. Not so great, Nadell. Not so great. I'll set you up for trade. Or release. You know, let's set you up for release. Of course, clicking away rather than hitting enter. And Mal Malawa. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but male, though. We're probably going to keep the females and, and swap the, the, the males out like we, uh, like we did previously. Seems like the better way to go. Yes, just still super happy. No, stop. Get, no, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, now I can't even. There we go. Zawadi, also amazing stats. Man, these our, our original lions were really, really good, I guess. Uh, Metzli has had offspring, fair enough. Money is dropping a little bit now. Must be like feeding time, but you can see we are profitable this year. It's only February, right? That's why we're profitable this year. Uh, however, let me just check real quick. Last year, now's a good time to check. Uh, finances last year, we ended up spending more. I guess we ended up with more lions because of the, uh, the babies. All right, here, here's feeding time for the lions. When does money get dinged? I'm actually curious. It's clearly not when the keeper walks in. Is it when the keeper starts putting food down? But 104-ish K, 104, 105. Money's on the way up, but here goes. Fill this buddy up and... Hey, that didn't... That didn't... Oh, yeah, it did. Look at that immediate response. So that was about, what, 6K right there? One, one spot. One feeding spot was 6k. Now we're at 98.99. Fill up another spot over here. Look at you. Okay, 100. 100 goes down to 94. Yes, yeah, 6k per spot that we're filling up over here. Wow. Do we need to fill up three spots with our reduced number of animals? And food enrichment is not that great. And now we're down to 88. Yeah, look at that. That is pricey. In one go, 18k was spent just to feed these lions. We don't even have that many right now. We have how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, wait, I can just read up over here. 15. No, not 15. That's inaccurate. That's, uh, that's how many animals we have overall. Uh, we've got 1, 2. Pregnant. Nice. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh man! All right. Okay. Good to know. As as some of the younger ones grow older, though, we'll have to um move them out. Wow. Wow. Eye opening, right? Eye opening. Oh, right. On the topic of eye opening, I need to open my eyes to these issues. Uh, they always, I always get reminded in the comments. Thank you very much for that. It's so funny how I how it slips my mind after uh, making the adjustments to the path done there. The other thing I want to actually do is I wonder if I don't think I can. No, I can't. Ah. What a unfortunate situation. Um I wanted to move this staff entrance over to this side, as was suggested in the comments as well, because then it'd be easier from here to just go up over there. But I can't just move it like that. I have to delete it, and that'll break things, and only then I can move it. Great. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and move this speaker out of the way. This speaker, I said. Ah, this speaker, there we go. Just a little bit over this way, I think we'll do the trick. I'll pull you, there we go. Is that really the only way to adjust these things, to delete and replace? Now I'm worried that it won't even attach to the path properly. Habitat gate, yeah. Well, actually this will be because of multiple... Alright, well, only one way to find out, I guess, right? Only one way to find out. Go ahead and edit barrier. And if there is a different way to do this, let me know. Feel free to let me know. Do that. Let's see dangerous animals escape. No, they haven't escaped. They haven't escaped. This place is closed. It's still perfectly closed. Put you down over here, it will not connect to the path. 
Wonderful. Let's see if we can't do this. Come on now. Come on now. Pull you over, pull you over. All this to save a little bit of time on delivering food. Pull you down there. And now get the staff path down over. Nope. Just, I'm going to undo that. I'm not going to deal with, I'm not going to deal with that. This can't be the end of the world. What is the end of the world is all these people now looking for a refund. That's the end of the world. Shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have bothered. But it is what it is. And now because of this, we're going to get a bunch of refunds. And not only that, we also have to reset our work zone, if I'm not mistaken, Australia. Yep. Done. Oh, just give them some like complimentary ice cream and be done with it. Look at that. Everybody leaves. Everybody leaves. That's the thing. It <laughs> Whatever. I, I like I, I knew it was gonna like I quote unquote knew it was gonna happen, you know what I mean? Whatever, it's fine. It's too late now. Well, staff can walk a little bit of that distance, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's better than what it used to be. Uh going from up over here down to here. Now they're going from here to here. Honestly, actually it feels kind of equidistant. Uh no, no, this is definitely shorter. Um uh, re rearranging that's gonna be the end of the world, apparently. So let's not. Uh, there was something else I wanted to do as well while I was adjusting this, and now it slipped my mind. Ooh, why have we... Oh, right, of course. Moving an entrance is, like, the worst thing you can do. There might be a better way to do it, and then that's entirely on me. I don't know uh, if there is an alternative way to do it, but I have not seen one. I have not... Um... I had one suggested to me previously, so I assume there isn't one, but I'm always willing to be proven wrong, and I'm always willing to learn from my mistakes, as we should all be. Where's the speaker over here? There should be a speaker somewhere over here. Is there seriously not? Oh, wow. All right. Well, we should fix that problem. When did that happen? Go over here. That should help with the donations, if nothing else. That should help with the donations, if nothing else. Over here, we'll need to lower the volume a little bit. Or not even, actually. Because the overlap is all happening inside the enclosure. We can drop it a little bit. One step there. Even this, uh, there's a bit of overlap on the path, I guess. Fine, let's go ahead and do that. It's not the end of the world. Oh, here's the speaker. And one back there too. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do that instead. Come on, there we go. I knew I was like, there's no way I forgot. I forgot this, but you never know. Sometimes mistakes happen. Kangaroos, there we go. There we go. That's looking a lot better. That's looking a lot better. And then over here as well, of course. All right, red kangaroo. Over here, we got to fix all the view as well. Not the tree. You and you. Speakers up over here as well. Come on now. Done. Beautiful. Ooh, a little bit of overlap. There we go. Better. Fix these up as well. <laughs> Not the tree. Red kangaroo for you. Red kangaroo for you. That overlap is fine. It's just on the log over here. Uh, this needs to be adjusted as well, apparently. Come on. Red kangaroo. Good, 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 good. Excellent. And then this speaker over here. Done. Wonderful. Not too bad, actually. That wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> we, uh, we managed to bounce back. Fair enough. All right, cool. Money's looking okay-ish. Back to 100k. It's every time the lines have to be fed. I really need to... Uh... I think the right next step in that case would be to establish another animal that has particularly high appeal. If we take a look at Zoopedia, probably going to go with an African animal next. Um, now again, I did have plans. I had, my, I had my stealthy, sneaky plans for what I wanted to do over here. 
which I don't think anyone's guessed correctly yet, by the way. So keep those guesses coming if you have any ideas as to what you think I'll be doing over here. But um, I might maybe do this, and that way we'll have, like, guests will have more reason to come over here. Uh, and we can elicit more donations from the tortoises as well as from, you know, whatever's going to go over here and, and, and more purchases from the vendors and stuff as well. Now, you, have you, are you complaining about walking too much? So they were complaining about watching, walking too much. Are they happy now that they got to sit down? Energy is maxed out. So I'm very curious. Oh, oh, sorry. Wait, the best way to check would maybe be they're happy. Okay, so benches will do the trick for guests complaining about walking too much. Seems to be the case. A deck. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, hold on. if you're thirsty, there's plenty of spots over here to grab a drink. So I would very much like to see you end up happy. Burn Ganon. I'll be back to check up on you. I wish I could, like, mark them, you know? In them like one would, uh, but, uh in, in Crusader Kings or something. Kadek comes back up from the water for one last time, potentially. Kadek has died in the water. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, no. Ooh, call the vet. That is a, that is a, that is a terrifying sight. That is our male saltwater crocodile. Resting in peace. We will need a new one. Let me check something here. Edlock is still very much alive. Obviously cannot mate with any of these. I wonder if... Nah, Edlock, if I recall correctly, has very good stats. Yes. We need to bring a new male in to produce more babies. Wondering if... Nah, you know, we're not going to get rid of Edlock as well. Bringing a new male in, what we'd have to do is we just have to put the males, the, the young males, on contraceptives. We have to wait until they're... Oh, actually, we don't have to wait until they're adults. We can just go over here. Animals. I've, uh, I've broken the habit of making sure kids are on their uh, contraceptives. Making sure kids are on their contraceptives. There's a sentence I never thought I'd have to say. Uh, Damadi, Sipta, Joyo. We actually have Chahaya here, but I fear that Chahaya is probably related to, yes, Elok, yeah. So I could bring Chahaya back. These are some pretty good stats. And, uh, and wait until, you know, someone else has, has come of age. Like, let's see. What's the deal over here? How, how, how far away are we from coming of age? Not you, Joyo. Any one of the females, please. 6.1 years old. If we take a look at Zoopedia for the saltwater crocodile. Maturity when? Maturity is at 14 years of age. Okay, so still a long time to go. Yeah, you know, it... it uh, it's not a it's not a terrible thing to just not get another male right away. Save up on those conservation credits because we have a good male waiting to be brought in. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is Elok stays out, continues to elicit donations, continues to you know do her thing. Um, then eventually, when one of these younger females comes of age, we get our or sorry. When one of these younger females comes of age, we should be... Oh, no, I guess, you know what? They'd be siblings, wouldn't they? They'd still be siblings. Animal trading, animal storage. Over to our saltwater crocodiles. Where are you? Saltwater crocodile. Let's look at uh, Chahaya here. Come on, come on. Um, compare mates, it's going to be inbreeding for sure. I mean, I can only check Elok, but they're, they're related. Yeah, of course it is. All right, so I, I need to get a new male. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No working around that. Fair enough. Let's get a new male. And we can keep the females still. So there's that. It will be 
you know, we can swap a female out if we feel it's necessary. And that way, in the next generation, Zahiyah can be brought back in. All right. Saltwater Croc. Let's see. Glad I, you know, kind of thought, spent, spent a minute to think that through there. Uh, saltwater Crocodile. There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on. 750 is not that bad. Mm, these jeans are all right. They're not perfect. Ooh, 219. Better. 145. Not better. Ooh, okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. 1,000. Because you're albino. Maharani. Oh, these are all females. I was like, Maharani, that's a... That would be a female's name. Rani means queen. Um, so... <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a weird name for a male... Saltwater croc? Well, that's because it's not a male saltwater croc. Let's see. Burka for 2,000. That seems a bit much. Pratham, I think, is the way to go here. Or, or Burka over here. 465. Sure. Again, trying to be somewhat eh, conservative with my conservation credits. Go ahead and drop you off to the quarantine. Money's looking good again. Good. Guest happiness is looking good again. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? They're so cute. They never get old. What a beauty. The game is gorgeous. The game is gorgeous. Postcard generator. Even look at the mountains off in the distance over here. What a beauty. All right. I feel like we're actually in a pretty good spot. Oh, the session over here. What is going on over here? Looks like they're playing, except it's just two animations clipping. <laughs> I don't mind either way. Uh, but, but I do feel like we're at a good spot today to uh, call it a session. Money, I mean, this is red right now, but money's... Looking like it's fixing up. Again, we went as low as 86k, right? So this is looking much better. Happiness is looking much better as well. And actually, before I do call it a session, I think I said I'd be back for not you, not you, no one over here, no one over here, none of these guys. I don't. I, I would recognize the person if they were still upset. Only one group of upset people here, so I would assume that unless they got away very quickly, extremely quickly, they managed to uh, grab a drink or something. All right, I will. I will use that to suggest that uh, things are working better than they were before. And again, we we should also use this as an indication, right? I feel like the heat might have actually been the big thing this time around, even though we weren't really getting that much of an indication of that being the case. Nonetheless, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's session. This is where we're going to call it. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And as I said before as well, if you have any thoughts on what you'd like to see next, I'm currently uh, sort of trying to plan out what happens next. Uh, I have some ideas, but I'm not like oftentimes I'll be uh, dead set on an idea of like, oh, I really want to do this thing or I really have to do this thing next. Uh, but right now, I'm pretty pretty uh, open to suggestions. I have a couple of things that I do really want to do, like finish off uh, Darwin's Den, or perhaps even finish off the, uh, you know, the uh, koala enclosures surrounding areas, like not the outer ring, that's again for later, but but this space over here. So there's a couple of things that I definitely do want to do sooner rather than later. Uh, but it's always fun to kind of just see what folks are interested in and then uh, adjust course accordingly. Let's go ahead and get this name in and make it official as well. Koala and Bera. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've become so nervous about how to say words <laughs> as, uh, as, I, as I look up etymologies and things like that. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed. Like I said before, if you did, you know what to do. Let me know. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Exciting times ahead for the zoo as well. Uh, good to see space is getting completed and then moving on uh, to you know bigger and newer things. And really good to see things are stabilizing at the very least, if not improving completely. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time.
Cheers.